After years of neighborhood battles, Boston University has won approval to conduct biosafety level four research. In layperson's terms, that means they can now study the world's deadliest pathogens at the university's National Emerging Infectious Disease Lab on the medical school's South End campus. So, what's it like inside that lab? Christina Quinn reports. Rows of protective lab suits hang in the changing room of a simulation of BU's Biosafety Level 4 lab, also known as BSL-4. The real lab is in an inner sanctum with 12-inch thick walls and heavily rebarred flooring designed to withstand an earthquake. So we use this lab to practice. Here, scientist Elke Mulberger demonstrates how the suits work and what's involved before entering. And in order to get air to breathe, you have to connect the suit to these air hoses here. So the air gets out here, but no air gets in here. Do you get thirsty in these things? Yes, you do. Absolutely. So the air is pretty dry. Once she's suited up, she'll access the chemical shower room using an iris scan. Thank you. You have been identified. Cameras will monitor everything inside the lab, and researchers won't ever be allowed to work alone. They will also be tethered to air hoses at all times. Mulberger came to BU from Germany nine years ago, under the impression that she would soon be working on Ebola pathogens in a BSL-4 lab. But all of that stalled when opponents filed federal and state lawsuits to stop the lab from opening. I was very surprised that there is so much mistrust in science here. I mean, if people have concerns, you have to take that seriously. And so I'm very empathetic. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I know that there is no real reason to be so concerned about this lab. There are currently 10 biosafety level 4 labs in the U.S., including Boston, which puts the city on the map for innovation in treating and curing emerging diseases, says Ron Corley, director of the Biolab. Emerging infectious diseases are a, an international public health crisis. I want to reach out to the people who do structural biology. I want to be able to reach out to chemists and engineers. Where can you do that? You do that at a research university. And so from my view, this is a perfect place for a facility like this. Not so, says Mary Crotty of the Massachusetts Nurses Association and longtime opponent of the BSL-4 lab. We consider it to be environmental racism on the part of Boston University, and it's the residents of Roxbury that are being asked to assume all of the risk and no benefit. Crotty also cites a history of problems with other CDC laboratories that underreported incidents of poor lab safety practices the most publicized one involving Ebola exposure at a lab in Atlanta in 2014. And there's members of our coalition who still intend to protest, so it's, you know, we like to say it's not over till it's over. The lab is already approved to start work on one Ebola project, and each project moving forward will require institutional review, as well as approval from the Boston Public Health Commission. As for Ron Corley, he's excited to finally get the ball rolling and to start Ebola research as soon as this spring. He's also excited about the potential for bringing in new talent. It allows us to kind of build a portfolio of, of pathogen studies across the different areas and to do it safely. What this is going to do, because that's unique to this facility, is it's going to uh, engage a number of people from the outside. We hope some of whom we will recruit effectively here, others of which we'll develop uh, collaborations with. Christina Quinn joins me now. Hi, Christina. Hi, Jim. Nice to see you. So speaking of neighborhood concerns, you yeah. said, I think I got this right, this is the 10th level four facility. Are any of the other nine facilities in residential neighborhoods? Yeah, so I, I clocked in about three so far. So there's one at, at Kansas State University. So mm -hmm. that's the only other one that's on a university uh -huh. campus. Uh, there's one in Richmond, Virginia, and another in Atlanta. Do we have any idea what was, is there a similar kind of neighborhood concern, or we don't know about what? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, you know, once they're there, that's one issue. How do they transport these pathogens? Right. How do they transport them to the facility so they can do what they do to begin with? It takes it takes a long time. It's a lengthy process. So first the CDC needs to approve it. Um, and then they have to work through the Boston Public Health Commission. And they have to work with state and local officials in terms of transportation since they're using both state and municipal roads. Uh, so it takes the whole process takes a couple of months every time you're getting a shipment in. Um, from start to be to finish. But is it, like it doesn't months. just come like UPS or right. something. Does like a two it night, two like. <laughs> I don't even mean that, but does it? <laughs> no, no. That, I, I'm told they use a, a specific courier for their deliveries. Have, have organizations like the M Mass Nurses Association and neighborhood groups, have they exhausted all of their, uh, other than, you know, protest on the streets? Have they exhausted whatever 
uh, vehicles they can use to try to stop this thing. This is essentially the process is over. Right, yes? the process is over. It's a done deal in terms of you know the the lab being able to study Ebola moving forward. But they plan on fighting. They plan on continuing continuing the fight. And quickly before we go, you were in a simulated lab. Yes. If you were invited into the real thing in the inner sanctum, really, yes, yeah. would you go? I yeah, I would. I would you check have, it out. You would check it yes. out. Yes, and you know what's funny? Elka Mulberger um, went that was through that two. Woman. Yes, yes, the scientist went through two pregnancies while studying Ebola back in Germany. She has, clearly has no qualms about, about her safety. So if yeah. I'm invited, you can go for me. <laughs> <laughs> Christina Quinn, thanks. That's actually a great story. Appreciate it. Good thanks to see so you. much.